There are going to be some very difficult decisions to make, especially when it comes to defense as Jaden Struble and the rest of the Habs decor continue to shine. Despite the shootout loss, Monty was phenomenal. Struble is showing he's one of the best defensemen on the team, and some of the Habs forwards are seeming to pick up a bit of their mojo. All of that on this episode of Habs Digest. Jesse, we're just going to get right into the game, and as always, guys, first of all, hit subscribe if you're part of the 58% of people that are not, oh, not that one. They're not subscribed. Subscribe now, but feel free to pause. Take a look at the box score. Um, this was an exciting game, Jesse. And honestly, let's just start in the first period where the Habs scored three goals: uh, Savar, Struble, and uh, and Monahan. Uh, it was just like that first period was maybe the best period of hockey Montreal has played all season up to this point. So true. So nice to get off to a good start. Three goals in this. First period, you know, we haven't had too much of this. So that was so important for, for this team. And what I liked was, like, they were really looking for those high-danger opportunities, going to the front of the net, you know, and that's really where they found success tonight. So definitely some really positive signs with that. Yeah, and what did what did we say, right? We said that that Brendan Gallagher quote, getting to the front of the net, getting down and dirty, that's when Montreal is at their best. And what did we see tonight? Maybe not everyone was playing the classic Gallagher style. I mean, not everyone was there getting cross-checked in the crease, falling into the goalie, but at the same time, it was just working. The puck was cycling well. They weren't afraid to shoot the puck tonight. Another game of almost 40 shots, Jesse. Um, it felt like this team had a different level of aggressiveness tonight, and they did exactly what, what you said in the stream yesterday they'd have to do if they wanted to compete with Pittsburgh, and that's get on them early. Um, first of all, do you think they listened to the show and they took your advice? And second, like, do you think this kind of game, at least this kind of period, could maybe serve as a, even though they lost the game, could this serve as maybe a bit of a momentum swing heading into the into the Christmas season here? Well, I think that definitely just getting off to that solid start, you know, and that's just the fact that we're able to convert early on the power play. It was looking good, you know, our first couple of power plays, even though we weren't scoring on all of them, you know, it was it was a step in the right direction in the right ways that, you know, it's like we're not waiting for the perfect opportunity, but really getting the puck on that, trying to get some bodies in front, you know. So I felt that that was really big, you know, Caulfield. We're shooting the puck tonight. You know, we saw Suzuki hit a post. We saw Slav, you know, hit that post late. But what I was most impressed about, again, was our young defenseman, you know, contributing offensively. Jaden Struble. We got to focus a bit on him tonight because he scored his second ever NHL goal. And it was a very similar play to his first goal in that he made the pretty much perfect decision as to when he should jump in on the rush. And he made that little pass up the boards and he said, no, I got a bit of space. I'm faster than these guys. And just darts past them. And now he didn't score on like a one time or anything, but the puck kind of came loose to the other side of the net. And he's there in a position where a forward usually is. Um, I know we've praised him a lot, Jesse. And I know we originally the thought was, ah, oh, send him back down. He, he'll be better off down there. But at this point, he's kind of proving to me beyond a shadow of a doubt he deserves to be on this team. And I'm really struggling to see what the Habs are going to do. Do, do you see, still see them sending him down, even though he has two goals already, even though not only having nine in his whole collegiate career? Like, for the likes of a Jordan Harris or Arbor Jack I soon, maybe it'd be better to get more minutes in Laval, but at this point, it's like, how do you send a guy down who is proving his worth so much night after night? Well, you have asked me before, Josh, if I thought that Jaden Struble was an NHL player. Mm -hmm. And I answered that absolutely, yes, he has, you know, and he's done nothing but just prove that every single night. But we see that confidence growing after that first goal that he scored in Buffalo. Again, showing, like you said, that perfect time to know when to jump into the play. And on his goal that he scored, he really started that play and then also finished it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was really impressed, too, with the amount of speed that he had kind of carrying the puck up the zone. He's a really good puck handler. So, I mean, and a really great skater as well. But again, knowing, you know, and having the courage to kind of jump into the play, get to the front of the net in a rebound, you know, because when you're that fourth guy kind of coming in to the zone, why Montreal's having so much success is it's hard to pick up that, that fourth guy that's attacking, right, in coverage. So he gets lost in coverage, and he's able to pot home a really nice goal. So, I mean, this guy is looking a very hard to send down, like, He's looking really confident in his plays. He's knowing 
when to kind of push the puck up night, when to kind of pick up the pace as well and, and to really attack. So I'm been really impressed with him. It's been just a complete revelation to just see him play so well right now. Yeah, this dude had crazy physical measurements when, uh, you know, before he was drafted and even after it's uh, like the Habs training camp and stuff. He's he's really, a, a, I mean, he's been pegged as a Greek god by some people. I was it, I forget who was a Bergman that said that. Was he a Bergman pick? I think it was, right? Um, I can't remember. It was someone uh who who said that but uh, man he is uh he he's really really showing out but uh, it's not just him tonight Jesse I thought really the whole decor did something that we haven't seen a whole lot this season and they really limited a lot of high danger chances I'm not saying it was zero I I'm Pittsburgh still had their fair share of chances and there were times where especially on that Gensel goal they had like four guys staring at a place where there was no puck but at the same time, I felt like the board battles tonight, there was there was a weird extra energy, physicality. I'm not sure if it was the Habs feeding off the crowd, if maybe Pazetta gave him a speech in the locker room or something. But um, but this edge they're playing with, and David Savard scoring a goal too, maybe it's him. I, I think he is maybe making a, a slight difference to this team already. I mean, we, we often, I think, under understate the impact of Savard when he's healthy. Because he brings that, he does bring a lot of stability and a lot of the mistakes that a guy like a Baron or Kovacevic has made, especially in their own defensive zone. Savar makes fewer of those, um, and he still blocks shots, and he goes out and scores a goal tonight. I was a little disappointed, actually, to not see him in the shootout and reward him for that goal. <laughs> yeah, he was jumping all over the play in that first period early on. It seemed like... He scored on what was like kind of his third chance, really kind of jumping in early, you know, playing great, knowing when to, to activate, didn't look out of place at all um, in the offensive zone. But, uh, you know, speaking of offensive opportunities in the zone, it's, it seems like we had like so many tonight. We were just so close. Like, I feel like the night tears are just going to continue, like for Josh Anderson, oh. like you're right in front of the net, the pucks on your sure, stick, you got cut the goalie on the ropes and like, and still somehow missing it. You know, you're in, in the shootout. You have a chance to win. You know, still can't do it. But, I mean, I think we have to speak about that shootout. Oh, yeah. Well, the longest shootout of the season. Like, this game was just exciting to watch. You know, like, sure, I'm disappointed. We didn't get the two points. We only got the one. But, I mean, you know, we battled hard. We got a good start, which is something we really – something you can build upon and improve upon. It seems like we could do a good third period. You know, now if we can get, kind of get that good first period to go with it, that's going to put us in a good position for sure. So, I mean, really exciting down to the last moment. We were scoring goals and then Pittsburgh was answering back. But, I mean, you know, Crosby is probably a big difference maker for Pittsburgh, right? Like, Sid the infinite kid, you know, three points tonight. Like, this guy just doesn't age at all. And he's one of the biggest hab killers ever from his first ever game in the NHL. The pot in that water bottle pop and shot off Jose Theodore back until today. It's it's crazy what he has done in two goals tonight and a shootout goal as well. But yeah, that shootout was wild. It was like 12, 13 rounds, um, so maybe even more. Yeah, I, I But still, it, it was crazy. And it's not like it was just miss, 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 miss. It was like every time there was a goal, it was answered. Even in the first three rounds, it was goal, 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 save, save. And it was just back and forth like that the whole time. I was convinced Slap was going to save us again. Unfortunately, couldn't get it done. Uh, Monty with another phenomenal, phenomenal game. And uh, and speaking of offensive opportunities, and, and we talked about that. The Habs had a million. Cole Caulfield, I swear, Nedeljkovic was out of his mind tonight. Some of the saves he was making, the perfectly placed shots. He was just like, no, it's nothing. He was amazing. Um, Caulfield should have easily had two or three goals, but uh, and Slash should have had one. Anderson should have had one. But I think one thing I saw is the power play. Even though we only got that one goal early in the game and we didn't convert in overtime, the power play was buzzing. All night long, the power play was buzzing and buzzing and buzzing, and there were so many good chances. And I think against a team with a less hot goaltender like Nedeljkovic was tonight, that could easily be two power play goals and probably the overtime power play winner, right? I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but I just felt like when we were watching that first power play tonight, it just felt like they were not giving the puck up. The zone entries were buttery smooth. It was it was wonderful. Absolutely. It's all about the decision making. How about some really crisp passing in that first period yes. that I thought was really impressive. I was looking for that to kind of continue in the second, but unfortunately, but yeah, what I liked in, about their power play is they were looking for good opportunities. They're trying to really maximize whatever chance they're going to get while not really waiting for the perfect one, kind of finding that perfect balance, right? Because 
you know, if you're kind of waiting for that perfect opportunity, it's never going to come. You're not going to get any shots on your power play. Of course, you want to apply pressure. You want to get them on the ropes. It was so nice to see kind of Sidney Crosby kind of coming off the ice, you know, huffing and puffing after quite a bit of pressure that we were able to sustain in the offensive zone a couple times in this game. So I really liked a lot of a lot of that selection. And it's so nice to see that we see with the power play, even though it's not all the way there yet, we're seeing really big improvements. So for all Habs fans right now, that's just really very encouraging. It's wonderful. The glimpses are there, and they've been there all season. It looks like so, at least, at least better than last year, to be fair. That's a pretty low bar. But at the same time, like, improvement. Like we said, it's a mm-hmm. big improvement over last year, and that's all you can ask, especially with a lot of the same personnel. And this is without Kirby Doc. This is without Newhook, and it still looks good. We're seeing Slaff on that first power play, and it's working well. Monaghan gets a power play goal on a bit of a weird play but yeah it worked right squeaked through uh the Delkovich's pads and Monaghan just poked it through but it was a good game overall a lot a lot of positives and again despite blowing a three to one lead two goal lead the worst lead in hockey as they often say Montreal came out of this with a point Samuel Montembeau keeps his save percentage 900 plus the Habs got about 40 shots against any other team I think that's a win tonight but it was a yeah well played game from Pittsburgh well played game from Montreal now we got New York Islanders Saturday hockey night in Canada and we'll be right there along with you but that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If we, if you enjoy, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Help us hit 10,000 subs. We'd really, really appreciate it. I've been your host, Josh Goss. For my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.